slowed down. As a, as a significant part of the demand growth will occur in developing countries where populations and economies are growing most rapidly. China and India will account for more than 40% of the world's incremental energy demand going forward. Mr. Chairman, the Middle East has also become a substantial new consumer of energy. This fundamental fact means that more energy must be produced from all available and commercially viable resources. Doing so will require an increase in the use of alternative sources such as nuclear, hydroelectric, geothermal, wind, and solar energy, which are already contributing to the energy mix. The alternatives will increasingly help economies as they become more efficient and more competitive. My colleagues, fossil fuels currently provide the bigger share of the world's energy consumption. Due to their availability, their affordability and their versatility, they will continue to dominate in the years to come. Oil and the natural gas alone will supply nearly 60% of the world's energy needs through the year 2030. The continued abundance of oil is another reason that makes fossil, fossil fuels to remain a vital energy source for the foreseeable future. Estimates from the United States Geological Survey indicate that the Earth is endowed with about three trillion barrels of conventional oil, of which only about one trillion has been produced and consumed to date. However, these conventional supplies of uh, petroleum are often found in hard to reach places. To develop this, there is a need to put in place sound, long-term policy that attract and incentivize the energy industry to explore and develop these resources. The new energy projects will demand new technologies, massive capital investment, and greater cooperation and trade among the nations of the world. As we plan for the future, we must remember that it is not just the tremendous growth rate in energy demand that should guide our policy, but rather we must also be guided by an understanding of the magnitude and the time scale required to meet the challenges of growing energy demand. The total worldwide oil demand is expected to grow from the current 85 million barrels per day to about 105 million barrels per day by the year 2030. We expect the current downturn to be temporary. And when economic growth returns normal, we will see strong energy demand return, especially from the developing world. With this new energy demand, we, all, we, we also foresee an increase in greenhouse emissions, in greenhouse gas emissions associated with the energy use. Mr. Chairman, globally, the energy-related carbon dioxide emissions are expected to rise by an average of 1% per year through the year 2030. The two fundamental realities of meeting NMA's demand growth and managing the risk of greenhouse gas emissions are the twin challenges of our time. It is, this, it, is, it is this future that compels us to lay the groundwork today for meeting the energy needs. Mr. Chairman, dear participants, while increasing energy supplies to meet the growing demand, the wise use of the energy resources should be encouraged. Energy efficiency will be an essential element in our country's ability to manage its energy challenges. Efficient energy use extends the life of our resource endowment. It also reduces greenhouse gas emissions. It supports stable, affor stable affordable energy for consumers, and uh, it strengthens energy security. The most promising opportunities for, en for efficiency gains are in the transportation sector, where both incremental and breakthrough innovations can have a big impact. Mr. Chairman, energy companies have been engaged for many years in ongoing, in ongoing collaborations with automakers and engine manufacturers to develop new energy-saving technology that can power a new generation of vehicles. The results could be up to 30% better fuel economy and lower emissions. Demand-side management initiatives are becoming more popular for electricity distribution companies. This is based on the understanding that uh, 
saving one unit of electricity is less costly than generating the same unit. However, much work needs, still needs to be done in this area, taking into consideration the quick win areas of the energy supply to end use chain. Mr. Pre Mr. Chairman, hydrogen fuel cells are another breakthrough technology that is under development. This new technology, when fully deployed, could be up to 80% more fuel efficient and emit 45% less carbon dioxide than today's internal combustion engines. Integrated solutions also hold the promise of helping reduce green, greenhouse gas emissions. The first and the foremost and most significant step is to maintain and improve the energy efficiency gains mentioned earlier. Businesses of all types must systematically work to improve efficiency and environmental performance throughout the facilities in our countries. Notwithstanding these initiatives, with rising energy demand, especially in developing nations, we expect an increase in greenhouse gas emissions. With these realities, we have the opportunity to expand dialogue about how all the nations of the world can make an imp impact on this important and topical global issue. As the dialogue continues, we need to be mindful of the policies that do not impede innovation, inhibit competition, add to market uncertainties, or inhibit trade. To achieve the desired objective of protecting the environment, we have to agree on policy options that are designed to reduce emissions. Given the global nature of the challenge and the fact that the economic growth in developing country economies will account for a significant portion of future greenhouse gas emissions increases, policy options must encourage and support global engagement. Whether we are developing new energy supplies or reducing greenhouse gas emissions, attention needs to be drawn to an effective risk management and finding the best way to balance costs and benefits. Government cooperation stands to help minimize the outside risk variables to the energy industry that come from fundamental policy shifts. By committing to stable and sound policies, our governments would attract and help energy companies to engage in long-term thinking and explore new ways to provide the energy for economic growth. Energy is a priority to most of our countries, and so our governments must play an important role in managing the risks in the sector. Our country's tax and regulatory frameworks need to be stable, reliable, predictable, and consistent with the promotion of the long-term investments that are required. The need for international cooperation provides another opportunity for governments to exercise a unique and a positive role by fostering free and fair trade. We know from history that uh, innovation and economic progress depend on the free flow of goods, services, capital, and expertise across borders. By enabling countries and energy companies to create partnerships, work across borders, and train local populations, governments would have supported the most efficient use of resources and human capital. And as we confront our current economic challenges, the developed economies must resist the temptations of putting barriers to, to, to trade. It is my sincere and honest belief that uh, promotion of free and uh, fair trade among nations will result in two creation of jobs and improvements in our economies. Mr. Chairman and the dear participants, the decades ahead will hold many challenges for our countries. One such challenge is how to manage the energy sector to power on our economies and sustain prosperity. The sustainability of the energy industry depends on appropriate long-term policies that support long-term investment in the sector. The bottom line is that, the bottom line is that uh, every, everyone has a role to play to overcome the challenges we face and lead to a more secure energy future. In terms of government's role, policies and regulatory frameworks that foster collaboration and innovation among all sectors are essential. If we work together, I believe we can expand our world's energy supply in a way that is cleaner, more diverse, more secure, and more affordable to all people of all nations. Mr. Chairman and my dear colleagues, 
I thank you so much for your attention.